may seem a little strange, but I'm really into sewage at the moment. Just to clarify, it's for work, not pleasure. <laughs> but the stranger thing still is that I'm a marine scientist and I work in the tropics. So the idea of choosing between diving on coral reefs, working with sewage, should be pretty clear, right? But today I'm going to show you how the two areas are actually really intricately linked and how working on sewage just may be the most important thing that we can do right at the moment for protecting the marine environment. And the thing is that we have a, a very strange relationship with the ocean. On the one hand, we're in awe of it, it's inspiring, it's mesmerising, we use it for food, we use it for fun. And on the other hand, we have a history of relying on the ocean to do all the, the heavy lifting when it comes to dealing with our waste. And this is a big problem because half the world lives within 150 kilometres of the coastline. Doesn't look pretty, does it? So for those of us who grew up on, on the coast, it was pretty clear, even as kids, that we really needed to, to change the relationship that we had with the sea. So I remember surfing on days like this down in Sydney, Australia, where I grew up. Uh, it wasn't pleasant. Those foam balls weren't nice. And you certainly learnt to keep your mouth shut at all times. But it didn't stop you surfing. What I also remember is that there was a whole lot of excitement uh, in the community at the time because this new system was being put in place. It was a sewage system. And since that point, we've really been enjoying cleaner seas ever since. Now that I'm older and wiser, I actually now appreciate the technology behind that. These are big facilities, often located right next to the sea, taking all the wastewater from cities and treating it. There's very intricate designs. It's primary, secondary and tertiary treatment using a whole lot of physical, biological and chemical processes, basically making water clean enough that you could drink. And I think we all got so used to this that we now started to take it for granted. Who gives a second thought about sewage anymore? <laughs> Haven't we got it all covered? I did some research and I found that 80% of the waste around the world is being discharged completely untreated. 80%. I can therefore tell you that there are 2.5 billion people in the world without sanitation that care about sewage. And unfortunately, it's not going to change anytime soon because it's so expensive to build new plants. I can also tell you as a marine scientist that there are plenty of beautiful, pristine environments out there that are still worth protecting, like the wonderful coral atolls in the middle of the Pacific and the island nation of Kiribati. And this is what we're protecting them from. So just between you and me, I sort of kind of think that this bright green bloom of algae off the coast of China is sort of pretty, but it's a bit macabre. And the reason is that it's a sign or a symptom of an unhealthy system. And it's nothing short of an ecological disaster. So I wanted to take the opportunity to use uh, the word algae as a bit of a, a euphemism for sewage and explore what's going on around the world at the moment. Now the problem with sewage is that it doesn't take long for things to get out of control. The nutrients in one litre of sewage can actually pollute a thousand litres of ocean water. It's a lot. It can bloom, cause a whole lot of blooms of algae that are gigantic and quite literally visible from space. Those green blotches along the coastline here, stretching for thousands of kilometres, are big green tide algal blooms. These green tide algal blooms are happening all over the world. There's blooms in Asia and in Europe. There's also golden algae blooms, a brown algae happening in the Caribbean, and red tides elsewhere. So what can we do to fix this? And more importantly, what can we actually do to start to treat four times more sewage than we currently do, because that's the shortfall? So we need to think outside the box, because the box just isn't delivering at the moment. So what about if we actually look to harness these blooming algae? Growing algae is actually already a really big business. 
20 million tonnes of algae are produced every year around the world, worth $7 billion. Hundreds of thousands of farmers working in patches, such as you can see here in this image, off the coast of Indonesia. So what about, instead of letting the algae blooms happen off the coast, we find algae that we can actually take onto land to clean up the waste before it actually gets to the sea. So scientists have been working on just this, trying to find something that can work with sewage. And the good news is that we found it. It's bright, it's green, it's algae. It's uh, nutritious, can be used for a whole lot of different uh, products, and it can be pretty much handled in the same way that land plants can. It's also valuable. Algae farmers get around about $1,000 a tonne for dried algae. That's not bad. That's four times what you could get for grain, more than 10 times what you get for sugarcane. But you can't just use any old algae. It has to be able to grow in sewage, and let's be frank, that's not very pleasant. You'd never want to have to use this life buoy that we have uh, at one of the, the plants there. It would be very ordinary. I'm shuddering still just thinking about it now. <laughs> so people are out there now looking, and what we're targeting is big algae, what we call macroalgae, because that's tough and it's fit for purpose. And when you find the right one, the winner, it can grow really quickly in the sewage and stripping out all those nutrients. That's the, the nitrogen and the phosphorus growing quickly, making sure that it's cleaning up the sewage at the same time. So what it needs to do this is space, open areas. It also needs sunlight, but then you basically have what's effectively solar-powered wastewater treatment going on. It can be retrofitted into existing wastewater treatment plants. And our facility in the middle of this image, right next to that shipping container, is one such example. And the good thing is that it's modular. So you can build it as big or as small as you like. It's scalable. And basically, it's perfect for the tropics. You can grow algae year-round, and it's delivering that processing, doing that service of cleaning the water that you want. Best of all, and the reason that I really, really like it, is that it's commercial. So I believe we can be aspirational, and we can treat all of the world's sewage, but only if we take a commercial approach. It has to be profitable to be sustainable. So if you imagine in the future, these are the types of systems that hopefully we'll see in the sewage plants. They're low energy systems, sunken in the ground, the algae is being driven round and round, stripping out the nutrients, cleaning the water, breaking and growing. It's going day after day, year after year. It's reliable and it's ecological. And the best thing is, as well, is that there are now companies around the world that are ready to start building this type of kit and doing this. So I wanted to finish with two equations because I'm a scientist after all. Uh, and the first is the problem of, okay, how do we reduce the cost of existing systems? Or basically, if you turn it around, how do we actually make money from treating wastewater? And the good news is that I think we've solved that problem by including algae. So what we can do, not just having it on the slide, but having it in real life here, we can take the sewage, we can then times it... times it by the amount of algae that we can produce. And then what this gives us is our revenue. Now, the revenue is important because it's really expensive to treat wastewater. Hundreds of millions of dollars to build and to operate plants. And it's hitting you in your hip pocket. If you look at your rates notice, around about a third of that bill is actually on wastewater and water services. Quite a lot. But I'd argue there's something actually more important at play here. If countries can actually take the lead and develop these innovative technologies, then we can reinvent the way that these systems are being done around the world. So that leads me to the next step. How do we actually go about making sustainable treatment for everyone, for two and a half billion people that don't have any sanitation? And I think that the answer is already here in this equation just needs a bit of a reshuffle. So, 
what we can do is actually now start to entice companies to the other end of the equation. Because we can make money. We know we can make money by growing the algae, which in turn is going to drive the investment in this type of new infrastructure, these new systems. And these new systems are smarter because they're simpler. And because they're simpler, they can have really wide sweeping impacts. Because, oh, oh. <laughs> just one more little bitch. <laughs> because I can't forget the oceans. By investing in these types of systems, we can actually, at the same time, invest in healthier seas. So it's time. It's time we all start caring about sewage again. And I hope, hope that uh, next time you see a little trusty toilet, just take, take a moment and think. What a waste, but what an incredible opportunity.